So you've got this motor that spins the wrong way. Usually not a problem because a lot of motors can be reversed. But then you check the tag and it says motor is non-reversible. And they must be serious because it's in three different languages. If you ask around, you're often going to hear the answer, did you happen to read the label? Or the label says it's non-reversible. You can't do it. Don't believe it. This motor can be reversed. They just don't make it easy on you. The non-reversible label simply means the manufacturer didn't bother to run the wires out a few inches longer for you to reverse that motor. This is not the simplest motor either. This is a dual voltage motor and it has multiple capacitors, but I'm going to show you it doesn't make it any more difficult. It has nothing to do with the number of capacitors and it has nothing to do with being dual voltage. to admit something, I'm going to cheat on this video a little bit because I've already converted this motor to be reversible. But I'm going to take it apart again and I'll use some pictures I took before I converted it. Now this guy is the rotor. Some people say you can flip the rotor around, which means you have to flip the end caps around in order to reverse the rotation of the motor, and that's true, but on most motors, the windings are not centered in the housing. If you look at the depth of the windings on this side of the housing and compare it to the depth of the windings on the other side of the housing, you'll see the windings are positioned closer to one end of the housing than the other. So if you flip the rotor, the rotor is not going to be centered with the windings. So let's forget about that idea. If you look at the windings, you can tell there are two different size windings. There's a larger one, which is called the run winding, and the smaller wire is the start winding. In this particular motor, there are two start windings. You can see one of the start windings is a copper colored wire. The other start winding is a dark green colored wire. The reddish copper wire, the larger winding, the run winding, we're gonna totally ignore that because in order to reverse the rotation of this motor, you need to swap the ends of one of the start windings. We need to find the ends of those start winding wires so we can cut them and swap them around. Those winding ends will obviously be closest to the area where the insulated colored wires go into the windings. Here I've indicated where you're going to cut. That area is wrapped in string and then covered by paper and then they put a clear varnish over it. You just need to cut that open with a blade and pull up on the wires until you expose all the winding ends. Now here you see the winding ends. All the winding ends towards the right of this picture are run windings. They're the larger winding wire. If you look towards the left, you'll see the ends of the start windings. So you'll see the smaller copper colored wires and you'll see the dark green wires. Those are the ends of the two start windings. I'll call them A and B. We don't know which start winding we need to swap the wires on. So we're going to try one first. If it works out, then we'll wrap it up and close it up. But if that's not it, we'll put it back the way it was, and then we'll try the other one. We'll cut the wires here and swap them around. The best way to reconnect these wires is to solder them. Before you do that, you have to scrape off the insulation. Then we're going to put the motor back together temporarily and test it out. You can see this motor is now reversed. It's spinning in a counterclockwise direction. If you remember, the label says it spins clockwise. Before you put it back together, what you can do is extend the wiring outside of the rear cover of the motor so you can easily reverse the rotation again if you wanted to. It would be a good idea to do something like put female ends on the ends of the winding wires that go to the windings and male ends on the other. This way you don't mix them up. Here you'll see I've already extended these wires out and if I want to reverse the rotation of the motor all I do is swap the wires around. You've got everything set up all you have to do is fasten all the wires and clean everything up so that the wires aren't touching the rotor. It would probably be best to use strings like they did originally but I'm going to use small zip ties instead.
there you have it. Don't let anyone tell you it can't be done.